Okay, so imagine this. A sailboat, right? But it was designed way back in 1942. And get this, people are still sailing it today. It's pretty remarkable, isn't it? Talk about standing the test of time. It really is. And that's what we're diving into today. The world of the Nordic folk boat. It's a boat that has captivated sailors for generations. And we're going to uncover why. And the best part? We've got a treasure trove of sources to help us along the way. Oh, absolutely. Historical accounts, technical manuals, even a peek into a sailing club's newsletter. We're going deep. I'm ready to set sail. Let's start with the history. Our historical account tells us this all began back in 1940 with a design contest. A contest with a simple but ambitious goal. Right. To create a boat that was affordable and easy to sail. A boat for everyone. And that's where things get interesting. Oh, how so? Well, the judges, they couldn't agree on just one winning design. So what did they do? They combined elements from several different designs, which, as you can imagine, caused a bit of a stir. A boat born from a little controversy. I'm intrigued. But controversial beginnings aside, it sounds like the Nordic folk boat was a hit right out of the gate. An instant success story. They had 61 orders before the first one even touched the water. Wow. What do you think sparked that level of confidence in a brand new design? It speaks to a real desire for a boat that was, well, attainable. Attainable? How so? Easy to build, easy to sail, easy to enjoy. Yeah. You know, people saw the potential. And that potential, it wasn't confined to just Scandinavia, was it? Not at all. By 1997, there were nearly 4,000 folk boats sailing around the world. 4,000. That's incredible. Oh. It is. And what's even more interesting is that this boat found a home in some unexpected places, like Switzerland. Switzerland, a landlocked country. Now you'd be surprised. Our historical account mentions a thriving community on Lake Zurich. That's fascinating. I never would have guessed. It just goes to show the universal appeal of this boat, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And it's clear that passion is reflected in the technical details, too. Oh, absolutely. The technical manual we have is fascinating. For example. For, for instance, while the hull, that's the main body of the boat, has remained largely unchanged, the manual shows how much attention has gone into refining all the little details. Like what? Things like bottom finish for optimal speed, different types of wood for the mast, the importance of mast stiffness, all these little things add up. It's amazing how much thought went into perfecting this seemingly simple boat. That's the beauty of it, though, isn't it? This simplicity that's actually incredibly nuanced. You've got a point. And speaking of nuance, our manual hints at a fascinating debate within the folk boat community. Ah, uh, yes. The classic tension between tradition and innovation. Preserving the original design versus embracing modern materials and techniques. It's a debate that plays out in so many areas of life, don't you think? It really does. It's about clinging to the past versus embracing the future. Exactly. And in the case of the folk boat, it has very real practical implications. I love that we're uncovering all these different layers to this boat. It's more than just a boat, isn't it? It's a microcosm of larger cultural conversations about history, craftsmanship, community, it's fascinating. It really is. And we haven't even gotten to the Sailing Club newsletter yet. That's where we really get a feel for the people who keep the spirit of the folk boat alive. I can't wait to dive into that. But first, let's pause for a moment and just appreciate how incredible it is that a boat designed almost a century ago can still be inspiring such passionate debate today. It's a testament to its enduring design, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. The Nordic folk boat, it's a classic for a reason. It certainly is. And speaking of enduring, I think our next stop, the Sailing Club, is the perfect place to explore why people are still so drawn to this boat after all these years. Sounds good to me. Lead the way. You know what's really striking me? What's that? We've barely scratched the surface of the Nordic folk boat, and look at all we've uncovered history, design, this whole debate between tradition and innovation. It's incredible, isn't it? This one boat has sparked so many different conversations. It really has, and it just goes to show you how much more there is to this boat than meets the eye. Exactly. And speaking of uncovering more, I think it's time we set sail for the Gedviken Sailing Club. Perfect. I'm ready to meet the people who keep the spirit of this boat alive. Their newsletter is a real gem. It gives us a glimpse into the heart and soul of folk boat sailing. What kind of things do they talk about? Well, they go into great detail about the process of getting ready for the sailing season. You know, like inspecting every last detail of the boats. I can only imagine making sure everything is ship shape. Exactly. And it's not just about the technical stuff. They also talk about the communal effort involved, how everyone pitches in to launch the boats back into the water. It sounds like a real labor of love. It truly is. 
and reminds us that sailing is often a shared experience, a partnership between humans and nature. That's a beautiful way to put it. You know, it's funny, we often hear about the financial costs of owning a boat. Right, a hole in the water you throw money into. Exactly. But with the folk boat, it seems like the real investment is the passion and the camaraderie. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It's not just about owning a boat. It's about being part of a community that understands and appreciates the craftsmanship, the traditions. And the sheer joy of sailing. Precisely. You know, reading through the newsletter, I was particularly struck by one sailor's story. He was talking about how, even after all these years, the simple act of casting off and setting sail still fills him with this pure, unadulterated joy. And that's the magic of it, isn't it? It's a timeless feeling. It really is. And it made me think about something. The technical manual, it actually mentions how to accommodate four people on board the folk boat. Four people? That's cozy. Right. And it even gives tips for things like sleeping arrangements and cooking while underway. It's like they knew this boat would become a vehicle for adventure, for creating shared experiences. Yeah, I love that. A floating home away from home. In a way, it is. The folk boat, it's not just about transportation. It's about connection, about slowing down, about embracing a simpler way of life. It's incredible to think that a boat designed almost a century ago could still be so relevant today. It speaks volumes about the timeless appeal of craftsmanship and community. And, of course, the pure joy of sailing. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think it also highlights something else. The folk boat. It might not be the fastest boat out there, but its longevity tells a different story. What do you mean? Well, we live in a world that's obsessed with speed, with having the newest and the fastest of everything. It's true. We're constantly bombarded with messages about bigger, better, faster. Exactly. But the folk boat, it reminds us that there's another way, a different kind of satisfaction that comes from appreciating the journey, not just the destination. I like that slowing down and savoring the experience. It's funny, isn't it? We live in a world that's always chasing the next big thing, the fastest, the shiniest. And yet here we are, completely captivated by a boat designed almost a century ago. It really makes you think, doesn't it? It does. So what is it about the Nordic folk boat? What makes it so special after all these years? I think deep down it speaks to a longing for something that lasts, something authentic. Authentic? How so? Well... It's a rejection of fleeting trends, you know? The folk boat represents a different pace of life, a return to simplicity. It's like a refuge from the digital age, a way to disconnect and reconnect with something more meaningful. Exactly. It's about the feel of the wind, the sound of the waves, the satisfaction of mastering a craft that stood the test of time. You know, as you were saying that, I was just imagining myself at the helm of a folk boat, wind in my hair, sun on my face. Can you picture it? I can. It's such a beautiful image. And it makes me think about all the stories these boats could tell, all the adventures they've been a part of. Oh, absolutely. Each one with its own unique history, its own connection to the people who sailed it. It's amazing. And it makes me wonder, as we wrap up our deep dive here, what will snick with our listener? What will they take away from this journey into the world of the Nordic folk boat? Perhaps it's a newfound appreciation for the beauty of simplicity, the elegance of a design that stood the test of time. Or maybe it sparked a desire to experience the joy of sailing firsthand, to feel that connection with the wind and the water. It could be both. And maybe, just maybe, it's a reminder that some of the most rewarding things in life aren't about speed or technology, but about slowing down, connecting with nature, and embracing the timeless pleasures of craftsmanship, community, and adventure. The Nordic folk boat, it seems, embodies all of that and more. Beautifully said. And on that note, we'll drop anchor on our deep dive into the world of the Nordic folk boat. Until next time, happy sailing.